The biggest example of surrender for me was the fact that of finding out the week of the wedding that my dad couldn't come to the wedding. There's a wound there around, will you still be around? Fine outside. Is it? Eh. If you weren't in fear of hurting another person's feelings, would you invite them? If you didn't have to invite them because they're blood, would you invite them? Really what I remember mostly in that moment was just looking at you and thinking, wow, I'm so excited to marry you. Like, I love you so much. One by one, they came into the circle and they put their hands on my back. So I've got a little template for us to follow today so that we hit everything we want to talk about. Right. The first thing, so what we're going to do on this podcast today is we're really going to take you through the process of this wedding from planning it to preparing for it to experiencing it in those three stages. But before we get into that, I just wanted to give a fun little teaser and overview and ask you and I'll answer as well, but what were what was your favorite parts of the wedding? Or maybe we can go back and forth. You share a part, I'll okay. share a part. So I'm gonna actually do pre-wedding and then I'll go to the wedding after your, your uh, example. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get married, I would highly recommend that you do this. Uh, or if you're about to get married, I highly recommend that you do this. So right before the wedding, the day before the wedding, two of my closest friends, Jan and Alex, they planned something just for the men. And then while we were doing that, Kelly was doing something just for the women. And what they did was about a 90 minute to two hour activity with just the, my, my two of my closest friends and all of my, my brothers and some of Kelly's family as well, just the guys. And we did this it was kind of like an initiation into marriage. So what we did was get together with all my family. We just did, we did like a check-in, just sharing. Um, they really just poured love into me and just shared what they love most about me. So everyone went in a circle. And it was so beautiful because in here with a lot of my friends, all of this open communication, sharing, this is normal, you know? And to really hear that from my brothers, I, I was in tears. The very first activity just going around, I'm like, I didn't actually know this. Mm. I, that, that's the way that they felt about me. And yeah, I was just so touched just by hearing their responses to what they love most about me and also what their f favorite memories with me has been as well. Yeah. And so already I was just, my heart was open. And then after that, we did eye gazing. Did I tell you about the eye gazing? Uh, yeah, yeah, I heard about it. From you or my yeah. brother-in-law, yeah. So it was beautiful and also really funny because if anyone's ever done eye gazing, you know that if when you first start to do it and you've never done it before, it can be really uncomfortable to the ego to look in someone's eyes and gaze at them. And all of the protection mechanisms will come to the surface. For some people, they'll want to look away. For some people, they'll want to laugh. And my brothers were just laughing. And... Then it got to a point, if the other person didn't match them in their mechanism of laughter, what I noticed is if I just stayed truly dropped in and just centered and didn't laugh with them, then they would stop. And um, it was just really beautiful to do that with my brothers and my dad as well. I was just completely in tears because I've never done that. Just really do eye gazing with my dad and um, so that was really beautiful and yeah just hearing my brothers in tears my dad in close to tears trying to like really be strong um, and not not tear up just sharing what he loved mm -hmm. and what else did we do uh, and then it was a really beautiful moment I'll play the clip right now if you're watching on YouTube you can see here there we did this uh, exercise where they're all in a circle and then one by one they came into the circle and they put their hands on my back and just shared with me any words of wisdom or anything that they just felt called to share with me as I step into being a husband and that was just such a beautiful moment with all my brothers and especially my dad mm. um, and the last thing is I just got to share what I need from them you know what what do I what do I really want and need moving forward into this new chapter of my life and our lives Very so cool. that was absolutely one of my favorite moments pre-wedding yeah I loved that so much I loved hearing about it so much um and actually I, I was I think I was going to share something different but your share inspired me about one of my favorite things about the wedding in general was just um 
something I didn't know until we were experiencing it was just how much a wedding is not just me and you making a commitment. Mm. A wedding is us inviting all our closest friends and family to also to witness this commitment and hold us in this commitment and kind of make this commitment with us. Yes. You know, even from the beginning of you asking my dad if you could ask me to marry you, it's like we're bringing in our family and our friends to bless this marriage and to help us remember our vows. And that's the, the special part about having everyone there to witness. So I would just say that that was really one of my favorite parts. It's not a moment, but it was just a lot of different moments, you know, from pre-wedding celebrating here in Bali with friends who wouldn't have been with us in the wedding in person to, yeah, my experience with um, the women when you were doing your experience with the men and and then, you know, just different things at the men bachelorette party here in, in Bali and, yeah, just having this really so feeling feeling this experience of having this really firm solid community around us because what I know from what people have told me is that marriage is not always easy and it is really important that we have people backing us and holding this vision with us and supporting us and having what we want and what we claimed what we committed to yeah yeah so that was one of my favorite moments I love that yeah and my next favorite moment yeah. was me sharing my vows with you and hearing your vows mm. so it was both yes. um yeah, I was like, I'm not going to cry. It's going to be all good. And I will be totally fine. And as soon as I started hearing your words, I was just really trying to keep my composure. Mm -hmm. So it was hearing your vows and just feeling your love and then getting to say my vows to you in front of everyone. Yeah. I really loved that moment. Yeah. Wow. And then in that, those, those micro moments where I really took the time to breathe and look at the crowd, look at our family, and just take in this moment where I'm like, wow, this is something that we've been planning for so long. And to get to this moment, there's been so much work that we've both done. I'll speak for myself, so much work that I've done about healing and all that, all the, the pain that I went through in previous relationships and now be here about to get married to the love of my life in front of all of these people that I love. It, and then just really taking in that moment, it was beautiful. Mm, I love that so much. Yeah. yeah, I loved that moment. His vows were crazy beautiful. Mm, yours and too. thanks. Yeah, okay, I'll share one more and then we can get on with, with sharing yeah. everything else. Yeah. Um, you know, I was just listening to this podcast, I think it was yesterday or something, and they were talking about why we cry in happy moments. Mm. And they were saying um, that from their perspective was we cry in happy moments because we're, we're recognizing that this isn't the way that it had to go, right? Like almost recognizing where, like what you just said about all the things I had to go through and all the tough relationships, and I relate to that. And it's almost like this like tenderness of like, wow, this like sacred moment that it didn't have to be like this. Like we, we almost didn't get here in so many different ways, like all these little decisions to heal and to lean into connection and to make this commitment all led up to this moment. Does that make sense? Yeah. I does. really liked that because I think it really brought, brings into perspective something something for me. So, um, okay, another favorite moment for me was walking down the aisle. Mm. I loved that moment, like definitely just such a peak moment of my life. It was like so... I didn't, I didn't think about this moment prior to it happening. So I think it was just, so basically we, you know, we, I, I walked down the aisle with my mom and we were kind of hiding around the corner so that no one could see us. And then when we turned the corner to walk towards where everyone was sitting and where Matt was standing, it was so intense to see everyone, all of our friends and family just staring at me, mm -hmm. <laughs> smiling, so excited, you up there. And I was just hit with so many emotions, like so much gratitude, so much excitement. It was just overwhelming. Like, um, yeah. And like so much, um, really what I remember mostly in that moment was just looking at you and thinking, wow, I'm so excited to marry you. Like, I love you so much. And I just started to cry walking down the aisle and yeah, it was so special. It was special. Mm. Yeah. 
makes me emotional thinking about it. Let's talk about planning. We're going to get into, yeah, more of kind of like the actual wedding and all that stuff, but I, I wanted to go through things chronologically a little bit so that we could uh, touch on different parts of the wedding. So first I wanted to talk about planning the wedding, and I think we can just touch on this briefly. Um, and really what I wanted to talk about within this is is um, how we changed the wedding dramatically two yes. times. <laughs> right before. Well, well. well, but also we changed it because we thought it was going to be in Bali. Yeah. And we went to see all these venues and we chose one. And then we ended up changing it so that we could have it in Australia. So mm -hmm. my family could be there. And then we had this whole wedding planned. We were going to get married on the beach. We had an Airbnb for the reception after. We had the caterers, like everything done. It's two weeks before the wedding. And then Matt and I both, both realized we just did not want to get married on the beach. There was way too many factors of the like not knowing if it was going to rain, <laughs> if it was going to be super hot, there was going to be people around, like all these factors that we just hadn't taken into account yeah. until two weeks before the wedding. Yeah. So yeah, we quickly changed everything, but it was so perfect and like ultimately it was so perfect. And I just want to say a couple weeks before that, so maybe a month out from the wedding, I had actually been praying a lot about the wedding mm -hmm. because I was feeling a bit anxious and it was feeling like some things weren't, weren't coming into place. And I was just like really in this space of looking at my relationship to God and surrender. And I was like, okay, I am just wanting to surrender this wedding mm -hmm. to God. And I'm like, God, please plan this wedding. Like I don't want to. <laughs> and I really feel like, that change two weeks out from the wedding mm -hmm. was totally God being like, okay, let me just actually make this more aligned for you guys. Let me, you know, we changed the venue, we changed the caterers, we got a wedding planner, we changed the celebrant, and <laughs> we actually changed everything except for the, the photographers and photographer and videographer, yeah. everything. It was really stressful, but it was also very exciting because yeah. I was like, wow, this is my dream wedding now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad that we did that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so anything else about planning the wedding that you think is important to touch on? Um, I think that having a wedding planner is worth the money, like getting getting that because how, mu how much time? Because Kelly put 20,000 more hours than I ever did. It felt like a part-time job when yeah. I was planning it. It was a lot. So I think that having having hiring a wedding planner if, you're, if you want to get married is very important and I also think that not only is having a wedding planner important but I really love how we just kept it small and intimate yeah you know, we just had our close friends immediate family and then other people who weren't invited to the wedding they were on zoom so I really liked that yeah I thought it was super it was very connected intimate and nice and then we also got to have our yes other most important people on zoom yeah yeah Okay, so what what I want to get into next, that was planning the wedding, now preparing for the wedding. Um, as far as we're pre preparing for the wedding, the one thing I really wanted to touch on was around the um, sit down that me and you had a day or two before the wedding where we went through the vows that we were saying to each other to yes. really... Um, establish what that actually meant to us so that we weren't just saying words that everyone says at a wedding just because that's what you're supposed to say mm -hmm. but really what does each word of each sentence mean and I want to say we didn't read to each other our personal vows that we had wrote we we only heard those at the actual ceremony but we did read the for better for worse vows yeah. so yeah so these were the traditional vows yes from this day forward for better for worse for richer for poorer in sickness and in health to love and to honor now and forever. So these traditional vows that you often hear in movies and at weddings, um, it can, I think that a lot of the time we will say words, especially a lot of the times where vows will be spoken without actually going into what does it mean for better and for worse? Like, do you actually mean worst case scenario? Like what if, and I shared some of my fears. My fears that I shared was, uh, were, you know, there was a fear that if I'm not making money and I go completely broke and, you know, money isn't coming in, there is a part of 
my my there's a wound there around will you still be around yeah right and i just shared that and what if i something happens and i mean i think i said i'm in a wheelchair which is you know right now i'm like hopping around because i tore three ligaments in my knee so mm. um you know that one came true that one came true yes. <laughs> yeah. literally a month no two weeks two after, weeks after our wedding. So, oh, yeah. well let's see yeah. <laughs> put it to the test she's, yeah she's been there uh, every step of the way Aww. one step of the way um did you get yeah. that well, <laughs> just because you're only walking yeah. on one foot yeah <laughs> um and it's just been it was just beautiful yeah so what was the impact for you just having this conversation so the impact for me was, well, I love just, yeah, talking about what is, what, like I said, but like, what is, what do each of these words really mean? Like better, worse, richer, poor, sickness, and in health. Mm. And that we will be, what I got out of it was real clarity on the nuance of what we are stepping into. Yes. Yeah. Like if a worst case scenario, you know, like one of us gets really sick, one of us is in the hospital, one of us, yeah, is in a wheelchair, one of us, you know, or we lose our money, and do we still commit to each other then? Will we still lean into this relationship then? Will we still, like, honor this commitment then? And I think prior to this conversation, it was like, yeah, of course, but it wasn't so crystal clear Mm. (laughs) of what that really means, and not just in the bad moments. I actually really liked going into the good moments too because I feel like sometimes relationships end because... I don't know, one person starts making more money mm-hmm. or the kids grow up or who knows, right? Um, that life gets really good and then we get disconnected. Yes. So I just loved what I felt so much in that conversation was our love for each other, like your love for me mm-hmm. and that really stepping into kind of that unconditional level of commitment. Yes. Yeah. Unconditional level of commitment. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not based on commitment it's not based on it's an unconditional commitment it's not i love you but if you do get sick then no i don't i love you but if you don't make this much money then i'm a no i love you but if you don't look like this then i'm a no and that's where i think the safety in marriage can really come from it's not just from the marriage it's from the it's it's from conversations like that okay what are the what 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 is the purpose of vows what is what is it what do these vows actually even mean you know yeah. 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 And, and that I think marriage is not about a feeling, right? It's not even about like always feeling good about each other or always yes. feeling connected <laughs> or always feeling even in love. Oh. Yes. We are having some of our cats fight outside. I guess it's Sebastian. Yeah, but I just, there's sometimes there's a, a other cat that comes... I think it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. okay. Um, do you want to get down, lovey? And okay. she's biting me. I can't. Her <laughs> nails are very long right now, too. And so oh, that so, was yeah. Go. Yeah. So I think that's a part of the reason why I feel so dropped into our marriage and so safe inside our marriage is because of these conversations. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I'm not really making it personal. So, yes, yeah, yeah. so I would really recommend. Highly, highly recommend yeah. if you are getting married soon or you're, you are going to get married, take some time to save your personal vows for the wedding day and then like the traditional vows. Like, what does this actually mean? You know? So that's what I would suggest. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, there's some cat You keep speaking, I'm listening. I'm just going to bring Sebastian in. Okay, great. Keep going. Okay. Um, we, if you don't know this about us, we have five cats. And we have rescued them all. They're little Bali street cats. and They were. And now they're little spoiled princesses and princes who <laughs> we take care of. So anyways, we have Sebastian and Stitch coming inside right now maybe. Or that's Lilo. Okay. So um, anyways, I feel like now I have to tell everyone all our cats' names because I want to. So we have Baby. We have Sebastian. We have Lilo and Stitch and Mama. And then we used to have a a little kitten named Rosie, but she died. So she's our angel kitten. She is. So really six. So we have six, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. So that's what I want to talk about in preparing for the wedding. So you spoke already about your favorite moment with the guys. That was another preparation moment. Um, is there anything else that you feel would be good to touch on when it comes to preparing for the wedding? In terms of preparing for the wedding, I think that it's important to get clear on what is an ideal wedding for you because often we are spoon fed what a wedding should be, right? It needs, you need to invite this person over here. You need to invite this family member. However, if you weren't in fear of hurting another person's feelings, would you invite them? If you didn't have to invite them because they're blood, would you invite them? And I think that that's what can create a dream wedding is that if it's your actual dream wedding and not buying into what you should do or what you have to do yeah. or what you must do, it's preparing for it is preparing it from your desires, your partner's desires, and then coming together and then co-creating a dream wedding from both of your both of your ideal uh, your ideal vision of a dream wedding. I completely agree. There's going to be so many people's opinions. Yeah. And it's just so important to remember it's not this is not your mom's wedding. Yes. This is not your sister's wedding. This is not your, you know, uncle's wedding. Yeah. <laughs> it's yours and it's it's your and your partners and it's really the first step in such a big life moment. And so to be on the same page and to really honor what each person wants mm -hmm. and find a way to make that work if there if there might be different visions is so important and such a huge signifier of also like what what you're stepping in the relationship the marriage that you're stepping into yeah. and even problems you might have within your marriage you know um mm. yeah so anyways it's a great time to i love all of that get clear on what you want how about for you so for me i i think oh this is so big it's getting <laughs> okay with the fact that it's just not going to go perfectly. Mm. You could have all the right plans, the wedding planner. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter. Like something's going to go wrong. And I, I really felt that in leading up to the wedding. And I started to feel kind of that bridezilla energy that people talk about you didn't know what that was before did you okay but most people know what that means right like women before they get married you can get a little bridezilla you can get a little controlling and fearful and attached to everything being perfect i i really started to feel that like the worst example or maybe the the moment that this really clicked in my head i'd say not worst example i was getting my nails done and the woman just filed one of my nails too short it was my ring finger too and i just felt this <laughs> fear this like anger come up in me and I just really had to breathe and be like it's okay like it's my nails but this real desire for everything to be perfect because it's such an important day so it's so normal to have that perfectionism but then also to it's even more important to just let that go and surrender to the way that it will go and my biggest so the biggest example of surrender for me was the fact that of finding out the week of the wedding that my dad couldn't come to the wedding that was so intense and so sad and such a big act of, like such a big practice of surrender really came into play for me. Um, basically, he just, his visa didn't get approved in time um, and we really tried everything to, to make it happen, but just from some extenuating circumstances, it, it didn't get approved in time and he couldn't come to the wedding which was so heartbreaking and so hard for me to be with. And it was a lot for me to feel inside of that, a lot of grief and a lot of sadness of letting go of the way I thought my wedding was going to be. Like thinking, you know, having this vision of my dad walking me down the aisle and, you know, my dad being there. Of course, I love my dad. He's such an important person in my life, of course. And so I think that every wedding will have its own version of something like that, right? Whether it's just something going wrong and... The more that I'm getting attacked by a kitten here, um, the more that you can surrender and let things go on perfectly, the better experience you'll have of your wedding. That's truth. Yeah. Okay. There's that. Preparing for the wedding. And I also just want to give a little overview. Like, so one part that I loved about preparing for the wedding was seeing our families come together. Yeah. 
they were they were such good friends mm -hmm. it was so cute like yes. i was so happy to see my brother-in-law and your brothers chatting and you know my nephew being so welcomed into your family and my our moms loving each other so much it was yes. so sweet because yeah. i just had no clue if they like each other you know would someone get into a fight i don't know yeah. but it was really smooth and beautiful yeah. yeah and i really liked and this is something i would recommend for those who want to get married in the future or are to have we had a dinner the night before and that was really great because um we had plenty of time to really connect with everyone especially being small where it wasn't just a, okay we're getting married and then everyone leaves it was like a multi-day event it really, really was it really was yeah we had a games night one night we had a yeah. rehearsal dinner yeah and then after the wedding too yeah okay so let's get to the wedding the wedding day um okay so we talked a little bit about it in our favorite moments um just the general wedding day right and something that i something that i wanted to touch on um Something I loved that our celebrant, should we pause? No, keep going. Okay. Come here, Sebastian. Okay. Maybe we'll have another cat joining us. Something that I loved that our celebrant had us do is um, write out a few things that we loved about each other, and she read it in front of the ceremony. Matt's going to get our cat. And so we, Matt and I wrote these things that we loved about each other without the other person knowing. And then she read them so that all our friends and family could hear and so that we could hear each other's. And it was a really sweet moment of, yeah, getting to hear what we each loved about each other. And our friends and family also getting to, like, relate and just see inside of our relationship a little bit um, through these special little things. And so what I wanted to do on this podcast was um, read them, actually. We both have them on our phone. So um, let's read what we love about each other. Let's do it. Okay. I will go fast. Okay, great. So, what's up? Okay. Do you have it right there? I need to find it. I know. I need to. I actually need to pull it up too. Oh, I have it. Okay. I got it. Okay. So, there are f four, three or four things. Okay. So, what I love about Kelly. One, I love how I never have to guess what her needs are. She communicates them clearly. I never have to worry about her withholding something because I know that she will tell me. To put simply, I love how effortless it feels to be in a relationship with her. Thanks, babe. That's number one. Number two, I know that being in a relationship that feels effortless doesn't come without effort on her part, which is why I also love how committed she is to working on herself. She's always reading, listening to audiobooks, watching YouTube videos, and getting support from coaches and friends to be the very best version of herself. Thanks, I love that. It's really important. Mm. And just something that I love, always listening to something. <laughs> and just growing. Mm. These are a few things wrapped up, so these are a few things wrapped up in one. I love her weirdness and her quirks. The way she makes up songs to sing to our cats. The way that she sneezes at, at an excessive volume and scares me. <laughs> her weird food combinations. How she steps away from the microwave if it's on so the radiation doesn't get her her ability to know the lyrics to most songs, how effortless she makes friends, and I love how she sometimes forgets to give me directions while we're driving and only realizes we've missed our turn after we've passed it. <laughs> Do you really love those things about me? Because <laughs> it makes her her. Aww. And finally, I love how she shows how she loves me in small ways that might seem small, but are huge to me. There have been multiple moments when I'm trying to pick a movie and I ask if she wants to watch it. And she has shared with me that she doesn't care about what movie it is. She just wants to be around me. Aww. And I love that. I love you so much. I love you too. Thank you for reading those. <sighs> so that's what our officiant, mm -hmm. Carl, celebrant, celebrant I mean. I think it was, is it the same thing? Sure. I think it is. I love you. Can I kiss you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. <clears throat> Let me fix my shirt. Okay, baby. You're a little distracting. Go over here. Okay, <laughs> right back. Okay. Mine, number one, is your kindness and care for other humans, animals, and even bugs who you save from drowning in our pool. Mm -hmm. Matt 
saves bugs who are drowning in our pool. And I just think it really speaks to like your heart (laughs) and how big your heart is. I just love it so much. (laughs) Okay. Number two is your jokes and sense of humor. You make ordinary or even stressful things become fun and playful. I love that so much about you. So grateful every day for that. Number three is your dedication to your mission in the world. You're an incredible coach, and I'm so in awe by how many hours you put in to master that. Thank you. Yeah, you're, I'm just, yeah, always learning so much from you. Number four is how handsome, sexy, and hot you are to (laughs) me. I love getting to look at you all the time. Thank you, babe. (laughs) I feel so blessed to just look at him all the time. Number five is how safe and taken care of I feel in your presence and how I felt that from since our very first date. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember so vividly you pulling up on your little motorbike to my house, mm-hmm. and I just instantly was like, wow, I just feel safe. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. <laughs> so those mm-hmm. are a few things that we love about each other, and I would suggest that for sure, doing something like that. Such a good idea on her part. Shout out to our celebrant, Kara. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'd love to just touch on a couple other like special moments from the wedding, moments that impacted us, moments that maybe we'd recommend other people doing. Um, and I can go first because I have one. Okay, just stop licking the wounds. Stop it, honey. Buddy. Okay. <clears throat> no, no, no. Anywhere else you can do. Not there. Okay. Um, okay, so <laughs> leading up to the wedding on the final days, planning the final things, we had to plan how many people would be giving speeches. And our wedding planner suggested four max. And it was so funny because we had nine people we wanted to give speeches. And I was like, okay, I know this is going to be a little unorthodox, but we want, you know, Matt and I really checked in about it and we're like, we want all nine to be giving speeches. And we gave them a time limit because we didn't want everyone to be sitting, you know, at the dinner table for three hours. But, you know, everyone spoke for like two, one, even one minute. Some people did like two minutes ish. And I loved that because because our, our wedding was so intimate. There were 19 people. It was almost like we were in a sharing circle where we got to hear just like little blessings, things that they see in us, things they want for us, um, prayers they have for us. And I just felt so loved in that process of hearing everyone's speech to us Mm. so even though it was abnormal i'd really recommend that like yeah in some way yeah however someone might want to take that for their own wedding but i know that for me that was one of my favorite things Mm. that we did in our wedding okay anything else on the wedding day um most like impactful moments or things you loved that we did oh i I want to talk about something Mm. we had a dry wedding we didn't have any alcohol oh yeah and i know that a lot of people were interested in that yeah and the reason we decided to not have alcohol is because neither of us drink. Mm. You like occasionally have a, a drink. Like a wine. I'll have like a wine very rare, like once a year, like a glass, yeah. and then that's it. <laughs> you don't even <laughs> finish the glass. Yeah, I don't even finish it. <laughs> you have like five sips. <laughs> and I don't drink. So we were like, yeah, of course. Why would we want alcohol? We don't want to pay for alcohol. And I don't even really like the energy of alcohol. No. Yeah, so we had the yummiest mocktails, like kombucha. We had a bartender that was making just the best uh, kombucha mocktails and sparkling water. And I just loved that. Everyone was present, sober, grounded with us. I think alcohol can really take, take take someone out of the experience, right? It's like mind numbing, heart numbing. Yeah. And sometimes it can give people courage to be able to express how they really feel whenever they give speeches or like you know it's like this thing that people use as a way to really open up their heart and give love it's like oh it's now i can fully open up i'm speaking from a man's perspective i don't know how it is mm, for women yeah but i know that that can really happen for a lot of for a lot of guys especially and yeah i just think that i love that we did that because to me it was so normal I'm like oh yeah this is like it's not a it's 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 a thing for for a lot of weddings to be that way, just full of alcohol, um, and I just love that everyone was sober. Yeah. yeah, everyone was sober. 
it was all vegan food. All vegan. <laughs> Everyone liked it. Even your brothers who are not vegan, your dad. Yeah. They loved it. Yeah. And I loved hearing how much they loved it. That was great. So it, I just loved that our wedding was tailored to us, mm. right? We're not doing like the normal things of having an open bar or whatever, but yeah. it's us, you know? And I, I would just encourage anybody to do the same for their wedding. And even our wedding cake was chocolate. It was brown on the outside. Uh -huh. Most wedding cakes are white. Yeah. But we love chocolate. <laughs> so we just made it that way. And our wedding cake was so yummy. There was chocolate strawberries on the outside. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Yeah. And then we did a little bit of dancing. So we'll just wrap up the experience of the wedding, right? A little bit of dancing at the end. And then um, <laughs> and then everyone went home. It was a pretty early night. Like the, yeah, bedding, the wedding, yeah, the venue closed at like nine, but we slept there. Yeah. There was a little cottage on the venue, which we didn't even talk about the venue, but the venue was on this farm in Byron Bay, up on a hill. There was alpacas and horses and dogs and cows. And it was just a picturesque, insanely beautiful um venue i couldn't have i could not have imagined a more beautiful venue so we slept in the cottage that night and um yeah it was really special one last thing i think i'd love to touch on mm -hmm. is around taking your last name yes right okay so some women had asked me to share on why i decided to take matt's last name because that's not a given for women um to do that and you know on a really simplistic level, I knew that I wanted to have the, the same last name as you. You know, we're going to have kids, and I want all of us to have the same last name just to be like a family unit. And then, you know, I know some people hyphenate and, you know, but I didn't want to do that. I actually really like the traditional concept of me taking on your last name, babe, because, you know, when we think of like polarity and the masculine really leading um, it does translate even into this where, you know, you so much are the head of our house, like the leader of our family. And I'm so grateful for that dynamic that we have. And so I know, so it makes sense, right? That I would take your not last name, not like, you know, you wouldn't take mine or, you know, we're not trying to be like 50, 50 in our relationship and kind of like an energetic level, like a masculine feminine level. Cause it's almost like the hyphenation is kind of like this. It's more of this kind of 50, 50 vibe if I think of like the energetics of it and so I think it's just it felt honoring to you and honoring to our family and the dynamic that we want and um it felt I I don't know I think I just also felt very my feminine to like take on that traditional thing of like become um becoming a, a unit yeah yeah so that's why I took his last name yeah and I had I, I was saying to Kelly before this that I had a story that people didn't really care about our story so I was like a little bit resistant to sharing just an update on our wedding but hopefully this has been helpful so if it has been helpful please let us know in the comments we'd love to hear it if you're watching on YouTube and if you got value from this and you listen to our podcast please tag it in your story tag us at Matt and Kelly on Instagram and yeah. subscribe if you haven't already yeah and we'd love to hear in the comments below like what would you love to hear more of on this channel what do you get value from what was your biggest takeaway so please let us know in the comments below because we read those and we love connecting with you guys in that way so okay crazy cat thank you guys for tuning in and we will talk to you all next time yeah see you next week